It's been a big couple of weeks in the fantasy football world with free agents getting signed on both sides of the ball. And honestly, the thing that I find in the fantasy football world is defense just gets completely ignored because people aren't focusing on defense. Well, if you're fantasy football defense oriented like I am, and if you play IDP fantasy football, you want to know exactly what's going on in the IDP world right now as well. So today we're going through some 2024 IDP fantasy football rankings and we're going through the top 20 guys today. So starting off here at number one, I've got Foyside Aluakon of the Jacksonville Jaguars. So Foyside Aluakon, as you can see on the screen, this guy was just a tackling machine. And what we're doing is we're going based on IDP 123 scoring standards right here. So you can see those scoring standards on the screen as well. What you're going to get here essentially is one point per assisted tackle and quarterback hit, two points for solo tackles and tackles for losses, three points for pass defense, forced fumble, fumble recovery, safety, blocked kicks, and six points for your big plays, your sacks, your interceptions, your touchdowns, your fumble recovery, and for your interception yards included. That's about 10.1 yards per yard. So based on that scoring format, IDP 123, the tackling guys, the tackle monsters, they're going to be forced up in here at the top. And that's exactly why Foyside Aluakon is here again. He had 111 tackle season with the 60, 62 assisted tackles right there. So that's already a lot of points that helped him average 16.2 fantasy points per game. This guy is also active in the pass game and you know he's used a lot of places in Jacksonville. This guy had 2.5 sacks last year, six passes deflected, and two fumble recoveries. So Foyside Aluakon is going to continue to be the anchor point of that defense as far as getting tackles go. At number two, I've got Antoine Winfield Jr. out of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and of course he's a defensive back. So really what you're going to see if you're new to IDP is that corners are not going to be defensive backs that you want. The defensive backs you want are going to be safeties. So the guys who are making plays, obviously, through the air, getting passes deflected, getting interceptions, stuff like that. But you're also going to want to see those guys at the line of scrimmage as well. Antoine Winfield, he's a little bit of everything for Tampa. They just franchise tagged him, and he had 76 tackles last year and 46 assisted. So really right there, he had a good baseline of tackles. And of course, 12 passes deflected, six forced fumbles, and three interceptions. So this guy can do a lot of things to score fantasy football points. And I think that just with another year with Tampa Bay on the franchise tag, with Todd Bowles still there, Antoine Winfield is going to be pretty valuable in this defense again. And valuable for you in IDP fantasy football. Bobby Okereke is at number three. Bobby Okereke is New York Giants linebacker. And again, we've got a tackling machine on our hands right here. You can see the numbers on the screen. This guy, 92 tackles last year. A lot of passes deflected. 10 passes deflected. That was one of the highest numbers out of any linebacker on this list. 15.3 fantasy points per game he averaged because a lot of times this guy was getting big plays and making those big point, you know, those big point totals through other things than just tackling. Now, of course, he's got that solid baseline of tackles, but when you can get a linebacker who can do a lot of things, that's where you're going to see guys like this come into play. If Bobby, Bobby Okereke is under contract, this guy is the anchor point of the defense as far as making tackles go. And honestly, I think this is a strong thing. In fantasy football, IDP, if you're the anchor point of a weaker defense, not a weak defense, but a weaker defense, middle of the pack-ish, you're going to be in good shape in IDP. Max Crosby at number four. Everyone knows who Max Crosby is. I don't really think he needs an intro. So what separates him? He's obviously on the edge. He's defensive end. What separates him from guys like TJ Watt and guys like Khalil Mack, Nick Bosa, Miles Garrett, other guys like that? Like, why is Max Crosby the number one edge rusher slash defensive end to be on this IDP list? Well, the difference here between Max Crosby and the rest is 100% based on tackling totals. Max Crosby had 55 tackles last year and 35 assisted. Guys like TJ Watt, well, he had 48 and 20 assisted right here. And guys like Miles Garrett, you know, Miles Garrett, 33 tackles. So he has a solid, a more solid baseline of tackles. And when you can get a sack artist like Max Crosby in his prime, 
you're going to continue to see Max Crosby average 14.1 fantasy points per game. And add on top of the fact that Christian Wilkins, that was the, in my opinion, the biggest free agency signing in all of 2024. That's going to help Max Crosby a ton. They're going to feed off each other. And I think Max Crosby honestly has a good shot of doing even better this year in fantasy football in IDP. Zaire Franklin of the Indianapolis Colts, linebacker, tackling machine. You know what you're going to get with Zaire Franklin. They held on to him, and he's still, I would say, towards the back end of his career, but he's still going to be a tackle machine. 107 tackles on the Indianapolis Colts defense, six pass deflected, and 72 assisted tackles. 15.3 fantasy points per game. You get a full season with Zaire Franklin, you're going to see good things in IDP fantasy football. TJ Watt at number six. Everybody knows TJ Watt, obviously, as well. TJ Watt, like I said, 15.4 fantasy points per game is great. That's a very good number in IDP. But what worries me about TJ is that, you know, as he gets older and the, the more injured that he's gotten throughout his career, with that low of a tackle baseline at 48 tackles in a year and 20 assisted tackles, that baseline is just not high enough to sustain good fantasy production if he drops from 19 sacks to... 12 or 11 sacks because it will happen at some point I, I don't think I don't know necessarily if it's going to be 2024 where he takes a drop off in production but we know it's coming in the next couple years for sure he's you know the, the guy's getting older so TJ Watt 19 sack season helped him propel him help propel him to this total but I do worry about the sack regression the negative sack reg regression that is coming for TJ but of course I'll still take him Quincy Williams of the New York Jets, linebacker, brother of Quinn and Williams Jr. Quincy Williams came in and is an immediate IDP contributor in New York. 95 tackles last year, 44 assisted tackles, 14.9 fantasy points per game because the guy is deflecting a lot of passes as well. Quincy Williams is all over the place, and he's one of the biggest pieces of that defense. Him and his brother, Sauce Gardner, they're kind of the anchor point of that defense right now. So, Quincy Williams, another season with New York. I think it's going to be more of the same. And I think he's going to be another top pick in IDP. Fred Warner of the San Francisco 49ers. I think most people probably know who Fred Warner is as well. Linebacker and really Fred Warner was probably not as good as you may think in IDP. Like, he was still good. 14 fantasy points per game. But Fred Warner is probably, if not the best, one of the best linebackers in the NFL. Him, Roquan Smith, you know, guys like that, all in the same type of category. Well, I think he's actually going to have a better finish this year. And the reason why is because they're going to miss Dre Greenlaw. So Fred Warner is going to have to pick up the slack. 82 tackles in 2023, I think that number goes up. I think it probably goes up to around 100. And that's going to raise his baseline entirely because this guy we know plays all over the place. 11 passes deflected. Four interceptions, four forced fumbles, two and a half sacks. Fred Warner's going to be all over the place. We just need him to stay healthy. As long as he stays healthy, I think Fred Warner's going to be a really good player this year in IDP. Kyle Hamilton of the Baltimore Ravens at number nine. Kyle Hamilton broke out last year in a big, big way. Kyle Hamilton, again, one of the few defensive backs that I really, really want in IDP. Kyle Hamilton averaged 13 fantasy points per game last year. It had 63 tackles, but he did so much more. 13 pass deflected, four interceptions. This guy is all over the place. Three sacks. Count on them using him very similar. And in fact, I would not be surprised if the Ravens started using Kyle Hamilton more in a linebacker role. Like, he'll be a safety. But I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him handle more duties closer to the line of scrimmage without Patrick Weed. So Kyle Hamilton, I think that tackle number goes up. I think that sack number goes up particularly. And that's going to raise his, his fantasy value in IDP. Jesse Bates at number 10. Atlanta Falcons defensive back. Again, one of the rare ones that honestly is top tier. 14 fantasy points per game because the guy is a tackling machine and he's also a ball hawk. Like similar to like a Minka Fitzpatrick in his prime. Jesse Bates, 89 tackles last year, 43 assisted, 11 pass deflected, and six interceptions. That, and a defensive touchdown as well. 
Jesse Bates can give you massive games in IDP. This is going to continue as well because he's under contract for a long time. So he's the anchor point of that secondary. He's a ball hawk in the prime of his career. You, you bet I want Jesse Bates in IDP fantasy football. Patrick Queen of now the Pittsburgh Steelers at the linebacker position. Listen, Patrick Queen last year, like based on numbers, wasn't it wasn't like he was horrific, but it wasn't like he wasn't that fantastic. Like 13 fantasy points per game is okay. 84 tackles last year, you know, five pass deflected. Like it's okay. Like it's not tremendous, but it's not bad. Ro with Roquan Smith being that lead linebacker, it's kind of tough. But Patrick Queen immediately signs three years, 41 million to the Pittsburgh Steelers, and it's immediately the starting linebacker. A hundred tackle season, I think it's absolutely in the cards for Patrick Queen in Pittsburgh. And they're going to use him as in the blitz. That's what the Steelers do with their linebackers. So they will absolutely send him on blitzes as well. That's going to leave lots of upside for a player like Patrick Queen in this Pittsburgh Steelers defense in IDP fantasy football. Roquan Smith at number 12 of the Baltimore Ravens, as we just talked about, with no Patrick Queen, this guy's upside is even higher. Roquan Smith, 84 tackles last year, 74 assisted. It's going to be closer to 100. This guy is going to be the anchor point. He's going to do everything for them. He's, It's going to be him and Kyle Hamilton on this defense that are going to have tremendous fantasy football upside in IDP. Roquan Smith in the prime of his career on a great defensive squad, defensive culture. They value him, and he's going to be tremendous in IDP. Alex Singleton of the Denver Broncos at the linebacker position. Now, if we're going based on last year, like Alex Singleton... It's kind of weird why he's not hired. He was 14.5 fantasy points per game last year and had 105 tackles. The reason I have him lower is because he's just older. Like, this guy's 30 now. So, how many more years is he going to be this tackling machine for Denver, especially with all the movement that is going on in their roster? Now, he's still there. He's still going to be the starter, I would assume. So, I'm, I'm sure that he will continue to be productive in IDP which is why he's in the top 20 but I don't with a player getting older with Denver making a lot of moves I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a down you know a downward turn for someone like Alex Singleton Miles Garrett of the Cleveland Browns so again Miles Garrett the problem I have with him is that the, the baseline of tackles is not there the baseline of tackles is low for Miles Garrett at 33 that's why he only averaged 11.2 fantasy points per game it's not bad right like of course when you get a 14 sack season you're gonna have a good year in fantasy but the problem unlike with max crosby who had 14 and a half sacks is that he had 33 less tackles and almost tw almost 25 or more than 25 less assisted tackles than max crosby he's just not as involved in getting run stops right miles garrett is <clears throat> not fantastic in idp he's good I, I like him, but don't think about, you know, trading a lot of value for him or picking him with a high pick unless guys like Max Crosby and TJ Watt are already off the board if you're looking for an edge rusher. Aiden Hutchinson and Will Anderson at 15 and 16 right here. So Aiden Hutchinson out of Detroit, Will Anderson out of Houston. I think they're both just going to take steps this year. Aiden Hutchinson did take a step in the right direction. So Aiden Hutchinson came in last year, second year with Detroit, and he's already looking better, right? Like Aiden Hutchinson, 10.7 fantasy points per game and 11 and a half sacks. I think this year is another step in the right direction. We're looking at a very talented player with Aiden Hutchinson. In this Detroit Lions defense, he's the anchor point. And he's not only a sack master, seven passes deflected. This guy's huge. Long arms, this guy's going to continue to get at least 10 pass deflections per year. So the big plays, I think you're just going to increase with another year in Detroit system. Coming into his third year, I'm expecting a breakout. And I'm expecting very, very similar from Will Anderson. Will Anderson is, you know, he had a very meh season last year. Like, Will Anderson was not anything special. He was the number two overall pick for Houston just a year ago. And that's why I think he's going to develop. And he's also got his teammate, Daniel Hunter, new teammate coming in to help bring some pressure 
off of Will Anderson. So Will Anderson, I think, is going to get single teamed a lot. And I think we're going to see some evolve, some evolution in Will Anderson's game. And that's going to help his IDP value. Now, Daniel Hunter is at 17, his new teammate. Daniel Hunter last year was tremendous. Tremendous in IDP fantasy football. 14.5 fantasy points per game. He was the number one defensive lineman in fantasy football. 54 tackles, and he had a career year in sacks. 16.5. Now, Daniel Hunter has been a long time playing this league, and he's always been really, really good. Last year was kind of out of, out of the blue, honestly. Like, not in the sense that we haven't seen it from him before, but he's getting older. And Minnesota, if you recall last year, they were thinking about cutting him. So... They brought him back, and he was tremendous, and Houston gets a hold of him now. I think the main guy is going to be Will Anderson. That's why he's one spot above. But Daniel Hunter in this defense, look out. His IDP value is going to be good again. Josh Allen of the Jacksonville Jaguars, not Josh Allen, the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> Josh Allen coming off his best pro season. And, you know, even with a seven, this is the problem, right? 17 and a half sacks. That's a fantastic season. That's over a sack per game. 12.3 fantasy points per game. Why? 43 tackles and 23 assisted. He's not a tackling artist. And he's also, unlike guys like Miles Garrett, TJ Watt, the problem with Josh Allen is he's not really a pass deflector. One pass deflected last year. All year. So there's not as many other big plays from guys like Josh Allen. And, and I think that he'll be good again. Like, I think he did find his way. But the upside is limited if your your baseline is not as solid as a Max Crosby getting multiple tackles, more tackles per season, than a guy like Josh Allen. And that's the ultimate problem here with him. TJ Edwards and Ernest Jones rounding it out at 19 and 20. TJ Edwards, linebacker of the Chicago Bears, and Ernest Jones, linebacker of the Los Angeles Rams. So TJ Edwards... <laughs> Listen, I think that TJ Edwards is an evolving player in this league. I think both of these guys are, actually. They're both younger. They're both on defenses that are improving. And Chicago, I think, is actually going to be pretty good defensively this year. Montez Sweat is going to make a lot of things happen, force a lot of errors. And a guy like TJ Edwards, who had upside last year, is going to see more tackles this year with another full season. And I do think that a guy like Ernest Jones is in a very similar spot. Now, as of the time of this filming, I'm filming this on Friday, March 15th. Aaron Jones literally just retired. Literally right before I started filming. So that actually I think is going to benefit Ernest Jones in fantasy football. Because that middle of the defense in the trenches is going to be weak now. So running backs are going to get through that second, that first layer of the defense. Leaving the second layer of the defense to stop him. That's where a guy like Ernest Jones came in. So I could easily see Ernest Jones being a 100 tackle type of guy in 2024. Now, let me know if you play IDP fantasy football and what you think about these rankings in the comments below and what scoring system you use as well. I prefer IDP 123, but I'm curious to hear what the community is doing. And if you want to see the top 12 defense rankings for 2024 fantasy football, click on this video right here.